that will be opened and Her Majesty will be greeted and then taken into the hall when the fanfare will sound. This really is the start for Her Majesty the Queen of an extraordinarily busy period of time leading right up to August and the moment she goes in the fanfare will sound. Majesty the Queen with just behind her, her private secretary, Sir Robin Jambrin, who's been the architect of this whole year of events, and other members of her household and entourage. She'll head straight up to the two thrones that she will occupy with Prince Philip. She will sit on the left-hand side. And as soon as Her Majesty has taken her seat, the Lord Chancellor will speak on behalf of the House of Lords, taking precedence as the senior house in Parliament. And then after the Lord Chancellor has spoken, he will take his loyal address and give it to Her Majesty the Queen. And then the Speaker will make his loyal address on behalf of the House of Commons and then equally deliver his loyal address to the Queen. Then Her Majesty the Queen will give her loyal chance to give a gracious reply. And then both the Lord Chancellor and the Speaker will go up to Her Majesty the Queen and receive from Her Majesty a copy of the gracious reply. And the Queen takes her seat, which is a sign for all to sit. And because in this day and age things are less formal than they were, Her Majesty the Queen chooses not to be more ceremonially dressed as she would be if she went to the state opening of Parliament. Most gracious Sovereign, we gather here today in Westminster Hall to celebrate and give thanks for 50 years of your reign and 50 years of dedicated public service. This historic hall itself symbolizes the continuity of our system of government. Many great state occasions have been held here, and most recently, in 2000, you honored us with your presence when you opened the Commonwealth's Parliamentary Conference. The Commonwealth is one of the greatest achievements of your reign. In 1952, it consisted of only a handful of countries and you were head of state of most. Now it comprises 54 independent countries which recognize you as head of the Commonwealth. The countries of the Commonwealth represent more than a quarter of the world's population. The Commonwealth is extraordinarily diverse in language, color, and creed. Occasionally, as all families do, it experiences differences of opinion but it is generally united by values which you have done so much to promote. The presence today of so many high commissioners marks the affection in which your majesty is held across the Commonwealth. The 50 years of your majesty's reign have been years of astounding change and progress. We recall from the early years the conquest of Everest the first scheduled jet flight of the comet, the breaking by Roger Bannister of the barrier of the four-minute mile, and Your Majesty, Lester Piggott, becoming at 80 the youngest Derby winner. Nothing, however, prepared us for the extraordinary events to come. Sputniks orbiting the Earth, Neil Armstrong landing on the moon, 
and Voyagers 1 and 2 reaching and photographing in amazing detail the outer planets. In medicine, the curses of polio and diphtheria have been eliminated. The identification of the structure of DNA has unlocked the mysteries of the genetic code. Surgery now performs operations once thought impossible. In technology, who would have imagined the mobile phone, the compact disk, or the sophistication of computers and the internet? Who would have predicted the sudden collapse of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Empire, or that the Cold War would be replaced by the threat of international terrorism. At home, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland all now have their own parliament or assemblies, giving stronger expression to the diversity of the United Kingdom. As our constitution has democratically evolved, so the monarchy, under your guidance, has adapted too. You have encouraged and rewarded the spirit of voluntary service and cooperation, and you have set a powerful example by your own selfless devotion to duty. You have hosted 88 visits to this country and traveled abroad to make 75 state visits yourself. In the face of change, you have remained a constant in our affections. The royal family has been able to perform its myriad duties at home and abroad with much less formality than 25 years ago. The royal website, royal.gov.uk, is extremely popular. It, it is a far-sighted and effective link with the people. You have opened Buckingham Palace to visitors, and during this Jubilee year, you plan to visit more parts of the United Kingdom than ever before. Your Majesty, you know that uh, I, unlike the President of your most honorable Privy Council, am no horseman, and I can claim no expertise in matters equine, but your love of horses and horse racing is well known to thousands of your people who share this love. We wish Your Majesty every success on the turf in your Jubilee year. We are particularly pleased that His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, has accompanied Your Majesty today. All your people know that throughout your reign, His Royal Highness has been your strength and stay and has contributed greatly in his own right to the achievements of your 50 years on the throne. And of course, we must not forget that only two of your predecessors since the 14th century, King George III and Queen Victoria, celebrated golden jubilees. And so, Your Majesty, you are a member of a very special group. We hope that the sadness of the early months of this year will begin to fade in the warmth of the affection of your people as your golden jubilee celebrations take your majesty to the four corners of the country. Your majesty, the Lord's spiritual and temporal in parliament assembled, give thanks for this golden and the Lord Chancellor can and your realms may continually enjoy peace, plenty and prosperity. And we just lost the last few lines of the Lord Chancellor's speech on behalf of the House of Lords, which he will now take to Her Majesty the Queen, hand over, bow and return to his seat. For the Speaker of the House of Commons, Mr Michael Martin, Member of Parliament, to speak on behalf of the House of Commons and present their loyal address to Her Majesty the Queen.